The 2023 Worldwide Developers Conference is going to make history, and it's not just because of iOS 17 and Apple's AR VR headsets. We're going to break down why, along with an update on a scary iOS malware attack that happens through iMessage, major games that are coming to the Mac, important app updates, and much more, all in today's episode. And like I said last week, if you want to stay uninformed about Apple news, just sit on the sidelines and stay unsubscribed. Otherwise, hit that subscribe button down below so you get updated with everything related to Apple and its actual news that you care about. So if you prefer to get the news in written format, I do also have my free Apple Den newsletter, which is linked down in the description below. More than 10,000 readers love that newsletter every single Friday. So anyway, let's get into this episode. Let's start with watchOS 10. I feel like we don't give watchOS enough love around here. It's usually always just iOS. But anyways, watchOS 10 is shaping up to be a massive update, the biggest since the Apple Watch was introduced. And that was a comment that we heard from Mark Gurman, but now it's being reiterated by another leaker. So you can see here, Majin Buu recently tweeted this out. According to my source, the development code name of watchOS 10 is London, and it's going to truly be the biggest update since the Apple Watch has been launched. He then mentions that it will be compatible with the Series 5 Apple Watch and later. So if that last part is true, that means that the Series 4 Apple Watch, which was supported with watchOS 9, is going to be dropped with watchOS 10. And that makes me wonder, are we going to see the same thing with iOS 17? Are we going to see the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus get dropped and not be able to update to iOS 17? We haven't really seen any leaks about that, so I guess we're going to just kind of have to wait until Monday to see if you iPhone 8 and 8 Plus users will live to see another year of software updates. Before we talk about a new iOS malware that happens inside of iMessage, we need to talk about some major news regarding the Worldwide Developers Conference, which goes down in just a couple of days. So on June 5th, 2023, we might just witness the longest and greatest Worldwide Developers Conference of all time. And you might be thinking, oh, it's just going to be new software and that new AR VR headset we've heard about for so long. But it's actually going to be a lot more than that, at least according to Bloomberg's Mark Gurman. And that's because he is now saying to expect, quote, several new Macs to be announced on June 5th. And while one of those Macs will most certainly be the 15-inch MacBook Air that we've heard about for a while now, the one with the M2 chip, not M3, what else could we see at this event? Because it doesn't seem like we've really heard much about anything else besides the MacBook Air. Well, how about a new Mac Pro or Mac Studio? Because Mark Gurman also just put out a new report detailing how Apple is testing new high-end Macs with M2 Max and M2 Ultra chips. So the M2 Max chip, of course, launched on the latest 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pros, but the M2 Ultra chip would be brand new and it would be the follow up to what I currently use as my main you know, driver for the channel here, the M1 Ultra Mac Studio. And then for the Mac Pro, which is the only Mac that Apple has not touched with Apple Silicon yet, so we're still waiting on that full transition to take place. We've been waiting for years for that. So Apple could announce that at this event, but I feel like the Mac Studio is far more likely to be announced. And then if you're wondering about the iMac, the M3 iMac, we're probably not going to see that at this event either, just because M3 does not appear to be ready just yet. So we'll probably see that new iMac with M3 later on down the road this year. I think Apple's going to skip M2 with the iMac. So again, if I had to guess, I think we will get a Mac Studio over the Mac Pro or the iMac at this event. Now, there's also talks about a new MacBook Pro, but I don't really see how Apple can release another MacBook Pro with M2. It seems like there's really nothing for them to do there. So I would say that a MacBook Air and a Mac Studio are the two most likely to be announced at the Worldwide Developers Conference. But if all of the products that I just announced somehow get a announced at this event, that would make for five new product announcements. And that would be insane. I, I think that's the most we've ever seen at a Worldwide Developers Conference aside from 2017. But of course, all eyes on Monday are going to be on Apple's AR VR headset. And for good reason. I mean, this could be a potential historic moment 
not just for Apple, but for the entire tech industry. And last week I said that we have a 90% chance of seeing this headset at the Worldwide Developers Conference. And now I'm going to bump my prediction up to a 97% chance that we're going to see this headset get announced at this event. Now, why did I bump my prediction up? Well, because Meta just randomly announced the Quest 3, their latest headset, on Thursday, even though it doesn't get released until the fall. And if you pair that with the fact that multiple high-profile individuals have hinted at the headset on Twitter this week, and the fact that we just got a spec leak, you know, I'd say this headset is pretty much a guarantee. I mean, there's just too many things piling on top of each other and adding up for this not to get announced in just a couple of days. So let's break down that new spec leak because the specs for this headset are absolutely ridiculous. And by the way, this leak comes from display analyst Ross Young, who is almost always spot on with his reports and leaks. So it looks like we're going to have micro OLED screen technology, which is OLED on silicon, along with a 1.4 41 inch display measured diagonally, 4,000 pixels per inch, which is 4K in each eye, and most impressive in my opinion, more than 5,000 nits of peak brightness. And just for comparison here, the MetaQuest 2 has 100 nits of peak brightness, the PSVR 2 has 265 nits, and the Apple headset has 5,000. That is just absolutely ridiculous. That is like no competition here. And as far as the resolution goes, the pixels per inch, the new upcoming MetaQuest 3 that just got announced this week is going to have an LCD display with a resolution of 2064 by 2208 per eye. Whereas the headset, the Apple headset, is going to have an OLED display versus LCD with a resolution of 4000 by 4000 per eye with HDR. I mean, I don't know what to say. This is just humiliation to the competition that is Meta and Sony. And this is exactly why Apple is going to be pricing this headset far above the PSVR and the Meta Quest. But wait, there's more because we also have some new design leaks. And this is coming from the information because their latest report details how the mixed reality headset has been the most complicated hardware product ever made by Apple. And if you want the nitty gritty details, check it out on the Apple Den, my free newsletter. But essentially, we're going to see an ultra lightweight headset made partially with carbon fiber, which I think might make this headset way more appealing to users since it won't be heavy, you know, like some of the others. I know a lot of people complain about the heaviness of the headset giving them headaches and just, you know, being able to feel it over hours. I think Apple's going to really focus, you know, heavily on the comfort, kind of like they do with the AirPods Max, which to me are super comfortable all the time. But anyways, the headset will also have a piece of curved glass with edges wrapped in a smooth aluminum frame. Apple had to develop a first of its kind bent motherboard to fit inside of the headset's curved outer shell. The thin profile requires users who wear glasses to buy prescription lenses that magnetically clip into the headset. That is super cool. And all of that sounds awesome, but this is apparently, you know, extremely hard for Apple to produce. So that's why I think we're going to see a, not a shortage, but kind of like, you know, we're going to see sparse shipments of the Apple headset. Like even after it releases, we're probably going to see, you know, delays probably from the get go, just because of how hard this headset is to mass produce. But again, as I've said before, don't expect this headset to actually get released until later this year. I would say the fall is like the earliest we will see this headset. I would not even be surprised to see this like in Q4, like late Q4. So we'll have to wait and see, but don't get your hopes up to, you know, be able to get your hands on it in the coming two or three months. It's probably going to be even further out than that. Okay, so now let's discuss that new iPhone malware that is spreading via iMessage. This news comes from a Russian cybersecurity firm called Kaspersky, who just revealed details about a sophisticated cyber attack targeting its own employees' iPhones. And this attack, which is dubbed Operation Triangulation, involves the delivery of malware through a zero-click exploit via an iMessage attachment, 
which then triggers without any user interaction. They've confirmed that this attack is still ongoing and that it's targeting devices up to iOS 15.7. And coinciding with these findings, Russia's Federal Security Service has accused the NSA of hacking thousands of iPhones of citizens and foreign diplomats in Russia as part of an espionage operation. The FSB also accused Apple of collaborating with American intelligence agencies. Now, now, Apple responded very quickly to these claims, and as 9to5Mac reports, they said, quote, we have never worked with any government to insert a backdoor into any Apple product and never will. So what does all of this mean for you? Well, if you're on iOS 16, nothing, you're, you're safe. This only impacts devices up to iOS 15.7. And if you're on an older version, like an iOS 15.5 or anything, you know, below 15.7, it just comes down to if you believe these claims. And you know, if, if you do believe them, then you may as well go ahead and update to iOS 16 if you're on a device that is compatible, you know, as able to go up to iOS 16. But nonetheless, it's still pretty interesting to see that these zero click exploits, which are exploits that happen without you having to press on anything or download anything. It's just when you get it, you're pretty much infected with the malware or whatever that bug may be. So this is another reason why it's just good to always keep your device as up to date as possible. And speaking of going from iOS 15 to iOS 16, Apple just published a new press release this week that details the stats for iOS 16 adoption. And the numbers are pretty impressive. So you can see here 90% of devices introduced in the last four years are running iOS 16. 81% of all active iPhones are running iOS 16, which is up from 72% in February. And you can see that also 13% are still running on iOS 15 and 6% are running iOS 14 or older. And when it comes to the iPad, 71% of all active iPads are now running iPadOS 16, which is up from 50% that was reported in February. And you can see that 20% are still on iPadOS 15. And if we compare these numbers to Android, well, there's not really any competition because only 12% of Android phones and tablets are running the latest Android 13 version since it was released last year. And speaking of iOS 16, Apple just released iOS 16.6 .6 beta 2 this past week for both developers and for public beta testers. And well, it doesn't really include anything new. So I did make a video on this just to kind of detail everything about 16.6 .6 as a whole and what's coming next, but you're not really missing out on much if you didn't watch that video because 16.6 .6 is a relatively boring update. We're really just looking forward to iOS 17 betas at this point. And then also I wanted to mention that watchOS 9.5.1 was also released this past week. And this was not a beta, this was a public release pushed out to all Apple Watch users. And while everybody thought it was going to patch the green tent bug, which was introduced to some Apple Watch users on 9.5, this update did not fix that. And it also did not patch any security, you know, updates or vulnerabilities. So this is kind of a mystery update at this point. But you know, as I mentioned earlier with iOS, it's always good to be on the latest software version, regardless of what's included or not. So Apple's never really been into gaming. They've never really put any emphasis on gaming. But now with the AR VR headset coming out, it seems like Apple is making some moves. And since the headset hasn't been announced yet, we've seen some new titles get announced for the Mac. And I think this also hints at these titles coming to the headset as well. The first one is Stray, which is that post-apocalyptic game where you play as a cat. I love this game on the PS5, and I think it would be really cool in VR. So that just got announced along with No Man's Sky. So they dropped a teaser trailer for Mac. And what's noteworthy here is that this game does have a VR mode. So I don't think this timing is a coincidence whatsoever. And now let's talk about some app updates. And we're gonna start with Apollo. And this is my favorite Reddit client for the iPhone. And they may be forced to shut down because Reddit is going to be monetizing its API usage. And this could be putting Apollo out of business. So Reddit told the developer of this popular application that it's gonna cost him $20 million per per year to use their API. And obviously he cannot afford that, so the app may be forced to close down unless further negotiation ensues. But the thing here is that Reddit is gearing up for an IPO, so it seems that they are not 
you're going to really budge much on the pricing. And it's really sad because Reddit is already making a ton of money and they are charging an exuberant amount for this API usage, like even more than Twitter, which a lot of people complain about. So I can see this actually, you know, reducing the daily active users for Reddit because a lot of people use Apollo because the regular application is just not even close to as good as Apollo. So I don't know, this is interesting. I shared a lot more details in my Apple Dan newsletter, but what do you think about this? Do you think Apollo should be able to have, you know, a cheaper fee just because of how popular and how awesome the application is? I don't know, share your thoughts in the comments below. Apple Music Classical is now available on Android. And what's interesting is that this came out before the iPad or the Mac version of this application, which makes sense, but it's just kind of funny to see that. Also, it did get updated to version 1.0.2 as a minor bug fix update. Apple also announced the July Friday night baseball schedule for Apple TV Plus. So you can see the schedule here on the screen. And I absolutely love this. This is one of my favorite features that's included with Apple TV Plus. If you like baseball at all or just you know like sports in general, I think this is an awesome thing to have included with Apple TV Plus. And then another sport, MLS, the season pass on Apple TV is now dropping its price to account for the fact that about half the season is over. So the 2023 pass subscription is now available for $49, which is half off. So you do also get an additional 10% discount for Apple TV Plus subscribers. So the monthly subscription price is unchanged. This is kind of just a special that Apple is running right now. The ETA application, which shows you travel times and traffic conditions is now available on CarPlay. So you can now tap on a location to start directions and Apple Maps on your car's head unit. So pretty cool application. I used this in the past, but it is now available for CarPlay, which I think makes it much more useful than just being on the iPhone. And then the final thing I want to talk about is that I will be live streaming the Worldwide Developers Conference here on YouTube. If you want to see that, check the link down in the description below. The live stream is already scheduled and make sure to join. It is an awesome time. I've done this every year for like the past seven years and everybody knows it's such a fun time. So hope to see you there. But anyways, if you guys enjoyed this episode, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for more iOS 17 and more episodes of Apple news just like this one. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.